Dungeons here. You know, there are more than there were more than forty of them. Now they're probably about thirty something, thirty two, thirty three. You know, huh? but when you get out of Ghana, then they become scarce. You see them. There are some in Angola, East Africa, uh, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and so on. But Ghana has a heavy concentration of these warehouses for keeping the slaves before. They are taken away. And this, for me, was a big problem. And I, I, I knew that these slaves, the slaves were brought from all over Africa. So in this, in this dungeon, they also made sure that no two slaves, as so far as they were aware, spoke the same language. So in this play, we had to cheat a lot. Um, but it makes sense to me that you would have Yorubas, Mandinka, uh, Angolan, whatever, from different parts of Africa coming together. Uh, I, would, I would like to touch on uh, this gentleman's question. Uh, he mentioned specifically the uh, Asante people. Uh, I think one of the lines was that Afri some African rulers are building their empires on a foundation of skeletons, African skeletons. And uh, it is true, again, that a lot of the so-called uh, great empires of Africa, some of them uh, were encouraged, again. You know, the gun was a very important tool. It was a symbol of power. And uh, there was a time when a certain number of slaves were worth one gun, and a gun in Africa at that time was a very powerful weapon. So empires fighting each other, uh, we were really turned <coughs> one against the other. So I'm, I'm trying to deal with two questions at the same time here. But it makes sense to me that you have all these different ethnic groups. And by the way, I also, my own personal makeup, uh, don't ask me <laughs> ever to say, uh, where in Africa I come from, because uh, in my background, <laughs> so maybe that's part of it also. Right, you want to ask a question, so come. I'll come to you. The name is John, Nigeria. First of all, I must commend this wonderful job. For the first time in my lifetime as an artist, I've been glued to my seat, because the play itself is self-explicit, you know, technically, artistically, and everything, it's, it's, it's a masterpiece. So I, I want to believe that this production should go beyond yes. the shores of Ghana. Yes. You know, <laughs> Sorry, that was lovely. Um, as an artist, I have taken part in this kind of experience back home in Nigeria, the Black Heritage Festival. And then I play, of course, one of you. And it was difficult 
not get into the role because I was never a slave. Uh -huh. So I had to be a slave. So I, I, I really think the international bodies here present should, you know, Panafest organizer itself should have a common performance where things like this can get on set so that people who were not slaves can really understand why they were slaves and why they should not be slaves in their homeland. I know that. And then the blame on the Europeans should be less. Because personally, for one, I, I feel the Europeans do not really have you know, much blame. They are, they are businessmen, like the Igbo men we have in our country. You know, they trade with their money. You know? So I think, like I want to say, and I'm recommending that this play should come to Nigeria, to the US, to every part of the world, so that Africa can remain united as we are. God bless Africa. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, even though I do not entirely agree with everything you said, uh, the blame aspect, I think that uh, uh, it's a very unfortunate uh, his part of the history of this world. And for me, uh, white, black, brown, whatever color, we must, we must ensure that this never happens. You know, unfortunately, we, we, we play around, we fool around, thinking that certain things cannot happen again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and one of my reasons for insisting that Africans here and Africans in the diaspora, we must confront each other. If we have to fight, if we have to do anything, we must do it until we really come to understand each other. Because otherwise, your stay for over 400 years in the stone, belly of the stone monster would have been meaningless. Because, you know, I, I keep comparing us our condition to the Jewish condition. You know, why is it that today, no matter how idiotic an American president is, <laughs> he will not dare incur the anger of the Jewish lobby and the Jewish community in the United States? Because that strength, which comes from the expression, never again, mm -hmm. yeah. which makes every Jewish person everywhere in the world identify so much with this little state of Israel that it can do all kinds of things, good or bad, sometimes with impunity. Now, our pain is still going on. The, the, the Jewish Holocaust, you know, had a beginning, a middle, and an end. And they are rightly insisting that it should never again, and secondly, that the perpetrators of the Jewish Holocaust must never be allowed to forget it. <laughs> we, we need, you know, if, if, if half the population of African Americans understand and if half the population of Africa understand our need for each other, we will not be beggars that we are now. Yeah. Begging people who themselves have made us beggars. We would not be beggars. That I, I that. Yes, my name is Marcel Davis, and I am an African from the United States in Seattle, Washington. Here. First of all, it was a phenomenal performance and a wonderful production. Thank you and thank you to all the performers. When I first began to study our history and confront slavery, I was full of a lot of pain to experience the horror and the tragedy of it. And it wasn't until later as I continued to study that that pain turned into joy. At each time that I'm confronted with a production like this, that pain is revisited and that joy comes up again. I just want to ask some of the performers how you deal with that 
pain and that joy in your daily lives? are going to be like. I can't really say right now because I just went there about four or five hours ago and I have to be on stage and that really gave me a lot of pain. Only spoke of what the white man was doing. So he tells you, This is where they put them, and I'm pointing to you. And then inwardly, it's like, This is where you put them. <laughs> so you follow it that way. So when we started rehearsing slaves again, I told the assistant director that I'm not too comfortable with my role <laughs> as I should be anymore. So, where I'll have to hit hard, I'll say, Okay, let me just do it slightly for now because I don't really. Who will be the black man who should have supported my colleagues, but instead betrayed them, joined the white man, and did that to our own people. And if to, to break away from that particular cycle of life to, to, to the actor, it's hard. It's hard, and I understand where the joy comes in. Because the sorrow is you did all this, and the joy is we are fighting back. Africa, please. I studied in the US 
I worked with my masters at the University of Georgia. Athens, <laughs> Athens Georgia. Yeah. I picked that because I had had the opportunity of visiting the U.S. before I had the opportunity to go and do my masters. I said I wanted to live and study in the deep south. I did my PhD at the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, I, I, I lived there. I even did some teaching also uh, after I finished at the University of Texas. And um, uh, you talk of inspiration. A lot of us are educated. At the time I was on a scholarship to the, to, to the US, according to United Nations statistics, Ghana was spending more money on education per capita than any country in the world. We're a poor nation, small, tiny country. And the majority of us who benefited from that sacrifice never came back. Inspiration to come back. My children were watching television, and there was an advert cosmetic advert, and I noticed my youngest daughter, I have, I have four children, the youngest one, she was sitting there watching this woman who is uh, a model advertising some kind of cosmetic. And my daughter, with hair like, uh, <laughs> was sitting there going like this. <laughs> <laughs> And I said to myself, it is time to go back home. <laughs> but then I carried with me a lot of experiences from the US. And those were what inspired you know, all of this. But the biggest inspiration, really, I have to be frank, was a lot of anger you know, about our unwillingness to see what has been done to us, what is being done to us, because I believe that slavery is a continuous, continuing act of violence. And it is continuing, even this day. And we are ourselves becoming the perpetrators of our own pain. So until we deal with it, so that is where you know it all came from. I just decided that, uh, so I, 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 somebody asked me, uh, you've written so many plays, and you have skills and craftsmanship that maybe you could have written a few uh, sitcoms in the U.S. and would have become a millionaire. Uh, <laughs> and I said that, uh, that you know it's important for us to write the drama of real life, like living room dramas and so on and so on. And I think there are a lot of our students who can do that. But this type also has to be. And so I've spent my time, and I'm inspired by young people like you and by our struggle. Yeah, it's getting late. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have not been able to meet many of uh, people in the West who really understand the damage they've done to this society. Um, I'm president of a small society that lives in Ghana, uh, not too long ago. I accompanied the president of the International Olympic Committee, Dr. Jack Bode, to Elena and People's Castle. After we were given a guided tour, and we came to the center of People's Castle, we stood there, you know, bowed down his head, raised his head, and asked, is that what our forefathers, is that the, the kind of madness our forefathers did here? So, I would want, you know, a cast like this, there ain't Play, play, play like this, to take it to the West. If, and I know, I mean, it takes quite a lot of my mind to be able to do that. Um, I would like to believe if the um, continental Ghanaians, especially, to contribute to us sending this cast out there to let people know that, you know, they've done this kind of damage to us. And people are forced in the West to be there, you know, to, to fight than this, you know, unfair trade to be given us. I've got a moment to this unfair trade. I mean, 
I think I think the, the, the festival is really happening here. This is really serious. Cape Coast used to be the capital of Ghana. Yeah, Cape Coast. That's number one. Number two, Cape Coast had and perhaps still has the largest concentration of the best high schools in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And in those days, you had to you, you, uh, you went to primary school and then you went to middle school at middle form two, which is like the seventh or eighth year in primary school, you take an exam called the common entrance exam. That common entrance exam ensures that out of all the primary school students, only 17% have access to high school education. And those high schools were mostly here. St. Augustine's, uh, at the saddle and find Sipim, you know, all those. And so, well, if you were in the north, if you passed the common entrance, they had to buy you a trunk and what we call a chop box and you travel and come and stay in the boarding house, you know. So, this place is the schooling ground the, the, where the brains and minds of Ghana were fashioned this place called Cape Coast. Now, those schools are all sprawled under the shadow of this, these huge monsters that we call castles. Children go to school here for five years, finish and go back to go to the university and so on, and never mm. set foot True. inside the dungeons. Do you even know what happened to them? Yes, maybe it's changing now. But this is a fact. So education is crucial. So no wonder that our children, our young people, you, when you send your kids to go to the University of Ghana from the US, you want to, them to be African, and they can't. They feel alienated from their own fellow Africans. Africans stick together. African Americans stick together. And you know, some African students ask, why are these people always so angry? <laughs> Well, they, you know, they are two something. You know. And when I went to the United States, white people embraced me and treated me nicely and asked me, oh, you must be really smart to know English, to speak English so well, and to come here. They opened their homes to me. I was invited to so many white homes, and I was very embarrassed, and I kept asking myself, why am I so blessed? <laughs> you know, until I realized that you know, I was not as much of a threat as my brothers and sisters who were there because I was supposed to leave. And all the things, all the things we see in the movies and everything are part of education. What do our children see about our people there? Prostitutes, pimps, murderers, Jokers and uh, buffoons, you know, uh, fat Aunt Jemimas, you know, all these, these are, these are this, look at the garments, you know, of television, film, and stage. And that's why this young man is saying, until we begin to tell our own story, the hunter's tale will always glorify the exploits of the hunter. So, as I just published, book on slavery in, indigenous slavery in Africa. I think that we need to confront 
So for me, it's not, I, I, I really would, would like us to, to look at how we can strengthen ourselves in order to deal with what you are saying is the economic situation and all these things that we are so educated to turn ourselves against ourselves, which is what we are doing all along. So they are continuing to twist and turn us around to the extent that we are so dizzy, we, we don't even realize that Africans on the continent and Africans in the diaspora cannot face each other. But I agree with you that, you know, that is what Nkrumah said, what Sekuture said, what America Cabral, all our great leaders, modern great leaders have been saying that, past great leaders have been saying that. But unfortunately, also, our rulers, traditional ones in the past, have been sometimes in the forefront. Have you heard of Baba Chu? This, where he was a slave raider, famous, and he terrorized the north of Ghana for a long time. And the day he was killed, our people in the north were very happy. If you go there, you see some of the walls. You don't know why sometimes some of our people have marks, people called tribal marks, so that you know, we can identify them when they are stolen. So it is real, the history is real. And I think that we need to confront it and deal with it. That's my main point, that we confront it. What we are doing now, which for me is very important, if we don't do it, we will continue to run away from uh, what we do. Thank you very much. I, 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 I believe we have, we have had a wonderful time yeah. together. Uh, we learned something, we all learned something. I think everyone can take something, away, take away something from this production. Um, we continue to know as, as we go back home.